I know our heart aches when we hear Australia, as the memories from cricket finals are very fresh in our minds. But with Mick Kinley, it's different because he's our long-time supporter and a friend. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mick Kinley, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Australian Maritime Safety Authority. We're Australia's national agency responsible for regulating commercial shipping and maritime and aviation search and rescue. It's an honour to be invited back to speak at this conference once again. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people who are the traditional custodians of the land from which I'm speaking to you from here today in Australia and pay my respect to their elders past and present. Now, the conference theme this year is diversity for innovation and growth, and it's one I feel strongly about. For many years, I've been advocating for diversity in the maritime industry. Building a diverse organisation is the right thing to do, and it also improves the performance of organisations. Diversity is a benefit to the maritime industry, and we can't afford to lose this benefit and miss out. The maritime industry is changing rapidly, and there's no signs that this is going to slow down. New challenges require new ways of thinking and workforce diversity has been proven to drive innovation. For a global industry like the maritime sector, it's essential that we make a concerted effort at an international level to foster diversity and inclusion for a sustainable industry. The World Economic Forum's Global Gender Gap Report published this year states that gender equality is not only a fundamental human right, it is linked to overall economic performance. And research conducted by the Australian Workplace Gender Equality Agency echoes this. Their research found that not only does gender equality improve productivity and economic growth, it also enhances an organisation's ability to attract talent and retain employees. This in turn sets up organisations for continued success. Employees at diverse organisations are more engaged, creative and innovative because the diversity provides a wider range of ideas. This in turn cultivates original ways of looking at problems with new and unexpected solutions. People working in these environments have higher levels of well-being and are less likely to demonstrate unacceptable behaviours like bullying and harassment. It is in everyone's interest to ensure our workplaces are diverse and inclusive and that diversity is reflected at all levels of our organisation's hierarchies. The Australian Maritime Safety Authority participates in the Diversity Council of Australia's annual Inclusive Employer Index. This involves an independent body surveying employees from organisations around Australia to identify their organisation's strengths and weaknesses in being an inclusive workplace. And I'm thrilled to report that this year we were listed as an inclusive employer for the second year in a row. The first time we participated in 2022, our organisation was one of only 30 Australian organisations to be listed as an inclusive employer. I'm immensely proud of these results and I'm proud to lead an organisation with a commitment to diversity and inclusion and to know that investing in our employees' well-being makes us more effective as an organisation. Our efforts to build a diverse and inclusive workplace makes us a respected employer and allows us to attract new talent and to retain existing employees. It helps us with our business as well. We're more equipped to reflect the people in our communities we work with and to promote diversity and inclusion more broadly across maritime industries in Australia and internationally. Now, it's taken many years of investing in our workplace and in our people to make AMSA a diverse and inclusive organisation. After consulting our employees and running surveys and workshops and focus groups, we launched our Gender Equity Action Plan. The plan targets key areas for women's participation in our workplace and how we can influence the maritime industry more broadly. AMSA executives sponsor a diversity working group the working groups a passionate group of employees from all levels that work to develop, implement and monitor our diversity and inclusion policies and initiatives. The diversity working group has rolled out unconscious bias training to all staff with hiring responsibilities 
And we do this to ensure that those recruiting and interviewing in our organisation are aware of the biases that negatively impact women and other marginalised groups so that we can have equitable hiring at all levels. We've also established a working group to consider gendered language, um, which is common throughout the maritime community and is reflected in our communications, regulations and guidance documents. And we hope this will enable AMSA to choose gender neutral language and influence external stakeholders to adopt unbiased and non-discriminatory language. We make gender inclusion courses available for employees to deepen their understanding of gender diversity also. And we've in implemented additional support for people experiencing family and domestic violence. This includes providing leave for employees dealing with family and domestic violence. We can see the impact these choices have made. In 2012, only 32% of our employees were women. By 2022, 43% of our employees were women. We've also seen consistent improvement in the number of women in leadership. In 2002, 11% of our leadership team was women. By 2012, it was 22%, and by 2022, it was 33%. This is especially a meaningful improvement as studies have shown that it's only when the number of women in leadership reaches over 30% that they are able to influence decision-making and be heard. Boards which pass this 30% have also been shown to be higher performing. Our board has improved its gender balance. While many, for many decades, only a third of our board positions were held by women, now 63% of our board members are women, and the board is chaired by Captain Janine Drummond, who's an inspiring and capable leader. All these actions help build a better workplace for our employees and for the people relying on our services. We take, take our role as national leader and role model for gender equality in Maritime seriously. We actively participate in IMO's International Day for Women in Maritime each year. We worked with the Nautical Institute of Southeast Asia and the Women's International Shipping and Trading Association to run a successful in-person and online panel event in 2023. We sponsor several scholarships for women. We've sponsored women for, from the Indo-Pacific region to complete graduate studies in maritime affairs as well as scholarships through the Australian Maritime College supporting women in engineering. We've also sponsored 25 positions at the World Maritime University, 10 of which went to female students to complete a Master of Science in Maritime Affairs. We hosted the 2023 Pacific Women in Maritime Association Conference in Cairns. Following the release of the IMO's Women in Maritime Association Strategy and the commencement of the Pacific Women in Maritime Association and Strategy, we're currently investigating how we can support Pacific states to develop national strategies that work to address local goals and targets. And we do these things because it's important to encourage diversity, not only in our workplace, but across the maritime industry. And we strive to use our influence to ensure our industry shares its strengths and builds the skills and experience of a diverse workforce for a shared outcome. So in conclusion today, I would like to thank Maritime CEO for inviting me to speak again this year, and I wish you all the best for the rest of this conference. Thank you.